Hello everyone! In this video tutorial, we will tell you how to add the Hyperlocal feature to your app. Log into your account and go to your business dashboard. Next, click on Manage App and you'll be redirected to the Overview page. Next, under the Edit, Test and Go Live section, click on Edit. Now, to add the Hyperlocal feature, click on the Add Feature button in the sidebar. Then, click View All and search Hyperlocal. Click on the feature to add it to your app. Once you add it to Future, you will see the feature listed in my Future section, where you can edit, customize, and organize the added features the way you want. Now hover over the Future and you will have options to show Hide the Future, Edit and Customize the Future, Delete the Future, and Move the Future. Now let's check out what all you can do with the newly added Hyper Local Future. Click on the pencil icon here to edit and customize the Future. This is your Future name. If you want, you could change it as per your needs. From here, you can change the feature icon. If you want, you can select a solid icon or an outline icon or an image from a library or upload your own custom icon image. Let's move to the content section now. Click on the add listing button to start adding job listings. Now before adding listings, you need to add a category. Provide the necessary details here to add a category. Enter the category name, choose how you want to sort listings in this category and set the category status active or inactive. Here you can upload a thumbnail image for the category. Once done, click on create category and here you will see your added category. You can check the category details including category name, the count of subcategories, and job listings under the category and status. Now hover over the region here and click on the three dot icon to perform different actions such as editing the category, making the category active, inactive, adding subcategories, and job listing under the category and deleting the category. From here you can search for job listings. You can also select your desired future from this drop down if you added multiple hyperlocal features. To add another category, click on this button here. You can also add subcategories under this category by clicking the number count or from the action options. Similar to the way we added categories, you can add subcategories too. Once done, you will see your added subcategories in this subcategory section. Now let's add job listings. You can add job listings under a category or subcategory as per your needs. For now, let's add the listing directly under the category. Click on the job listing count link here and then click on the add job button to add a new job listing. Enter the job title as per the service you provide in this field. Next, set the estimated budget for providing the service. You can even ch change its icon from here. Now select the unit for the specified budget. From here, you can enable an inquiry form and set an icon for it. Select the default form if you want your app users to request a quote from the admin or listing owner for hiring a service professional for their service needs. Tick mark this checkbox if you want to activate the availability schedule. With this option, your app users will be able to book an appointment after checking the availability schedule of the service needed. Now here you can define the job summary. You can also add multiple images in a single YouTube URL for the job listing from the Add Media section. Here you can add the necessary contact details including email addresses, URLs, contact numbers, address, and other information. Once you add an address, it will be displayed on the map here. You can tick mark this checkbox here to allow your app users to view the address in the device native maps application. Once you're done adding the details, click on save to continue. Now here you will see your added job listing and its detail. De now come into the manage booking section. In this section, you will find all the appointments or bookings booked by your users. Now let's go ahead and move to the general settings, which is further categorized into configuration settings, language settings, default schedule, and payment settings. First is configuration setting, which lets you manage hyperlocal future settings. From here, you can change the admin email if you want. With all these options in this section, you can control and configure hyperlocal future settings as per your needs. Once you're done configuring the settings, click on save to continue. Now coming to the language settings from this section, you can manage all text alerts and message messages showing up in the hyperlocal future. Next up is default schedule. Here you can set a default timing schedule that will apply when you set the active ability schedule to default timing on the job listing page. Set the schedule as per your requirement and once done, click on save. Now let's move on to the payment settings. Depending on the type of currency you selected from the general settings, the payment methods will automatically set in the payment settings act section. You can set up the payment methods as per your preference and once done, click on save. 
Finally, let's check out the import e export section. From this section, you can import and export job listings. With the import option, you can add multiple job listings in a single go by uploading a CSV file. Also, you can directly export the created job listings in CSV or Excel format. Let's now go back and check out the advanced settings of the hyperlocal feature. Click this icon here to configure advanced settings and subscription payment methods. Enable or disable the toggles as per your needs to configure the advanced settings. From here, you set up your subscription payment method. Now let's change the layout and color scheme for the hyperlocal feature. Click on this color palette icon to change the feature style and color scheme. Select your desired layout from the options and configure the layout settings. Next, select the color and font sizes and also choose to show or hide borders. If you want, you can also enable a back navigation button on the header by enabling this toggle. Now let's enable in-app purchase for this feature. Click the in-app settings icon in the side menu, then under in-app settings, enable the in-app toggle and provide the necessary credentials in the required fields. Please note you can enable in-app for both Android and iOS. For getting the credentials, you can click on the question mark icon here and refer to our tutorial. After providing the credentials, you can use them as global credentials by checking this checkbox here. Please note you can also add new credentials if you want. Once you're done with the changes, all the edits and changes will be saved automatically. However, you can also save them manually by clicking this button here. Now click on the publish button to see the reflection of your latest updates on your mobile app. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates as soon as they are live.